Welcome back to this series, Supernatural Signs of God's Glory. This is my third video. Last time I was explaining to you the content of some of the intimate discussions that Moses was having at his tent door. And it was very clear, God made it very clear to Moses that there were going to be consequences for the building of the golden calf, the idol. It would make uh, my uh, teaching today a lot more clear to you if you knew what happened there. If you go back and read Exodus 32, you probably remember it, but just go back and quickly read it, that would help. This idol was made from Egyptian gold, given to the Israelites as they left Egypt. The Egyptians were glad to get rid of them, so they gave them gold. Go, go, take the gold, to go. Exodus 12, 35, 36. Now, as a result of this shameless idolatry, God said to Moses in one of his discussions at the door of his tent, he said, listen, go up to the land flowing with milk and honey. It's there, but I will not go up with you in the midst because you're a stiff necked and rebellious people and I might destroy you on the way. If God got angry, that'd be it. He would destroy the people. In fact, he offered to make a new nation from Moses. That's in Exodus 33, verse 3. But Moses, like Abraham had done before, discussed with God. He was a friend of God and he reasoned with God to change his mind, reminding him that this nation is your people. Not my people, it's your people. Exodus 33 and verse 13. Moses' argument or discussion with God was based upon this. He said, listen, if you don't go up with us, it will show the other nations of the earth that this would be a bad sign. Your presence with us is the real distinguishing characteristics of your nation. If you're not there, you know, it's, it's no real witness to the other nations that the Jewish nation, the Israelite nation, is different. So that's what he argued and uh, he prevailed in Exodus 33, 16. God graciously agreed and uh, because based upon the uh, closeness of their relationship. Now, after that uh, discussion, Moses having won the guarantee of God's presence was now going a step further. And in verse 18 of Exodus 33, Moses then said, please Lord, show me your glory. Now you think, well, Moses had experienced God's glory he had seen the angel of the Lord in the burning bush when he was called in Exodus chapter 3. He'd witnessed the mighty plagues, the ten plagues in Egypt, including the opening of the Red Sea. And he spoke to God regularly in the pillar of cloud at his tent door. But he was hungry, spiritually hungry. He wanted to see and experience God's glory. Now, I'm defining God's glory to make a distinction between his presence and his glory. I'm saying the glory is the overwhelming presence, the powerful, unlimited presence, because you can have the presence of God quiet. <laughs> you can have the overwhelming presence, and that's the glory of God. Now, in fact, God uh, agreed to grant uh, Moses his request of, of showing him his glory, but he had to hide him in the cleft of a rock while his glory passed by. That's in Exodus 33, 19 to 23. Now Moses was hungry, spiritually hungry. And um, for each of us, spiritual hunger is a sign of spiritual health. We know as parents that uh, if a kid loses its appetite, that child doesn't want to eat, then that child is unwell. So we need to carefully think about, are we spiritually hungry? And hold on to that desire to experience more of God and to experience his overwhelming presence. What would be the advantage of that overwhelming presence? Well, in that canopy of glory that comes down, often in the form of a cloud, everybody gets healed. All problems are ironed out, everything is healed. It's not like the anointing, which is just a one-to-one -one praying for someone and God's 
glory passes through, God's presence, power, anointing passes through. With the glory cloud, everybody gets healed. Everybody's finances are sorted out and so on. Now, you, like me, have probably got precious memories of such uh, great encounters we've, we've had in the past, times when we were overcome. This has happened to me many times, uh, overcome with uncontrollable laughter. Couldn't stop laughing. I was drunk in the spirit, rolling on a bed, drunk in the spirit, not knowing where I was, thinking, Lord, this is wonderful. Let me stay here. <laughs> or another times when you feel liquid fire going through your body when you could lay hands on anything and it would live. Now, this canopy of God's glory will heal all those near to it en masse. And sometimes Jesus used the anointing. He was the anointed one, of course. But sometimes on the hillsides, it must have been the glory of God that ministered to the people because there was a great harvest. And we should be seeking in our day to experience this glory, this unlimited glory are you wanting this let's uh, let's pray this overwhelming presence of god we need to desire it now if i go too fast in this prayer you'll have to go back and uh, read it in the notes let's pray heavenly father because of your amazing grace in my life i have been privileged to know you even to glimpse a bit of your glory i have learned who you are through the scriptures through which you speak. I have experienced your guidance and blessing. I have been refreshed and encouraged by your spirit. But in my heart, you have placed a deep desire to know your glorious, overwhelming presence. So like Moses, I want to perceive and understand your beauty and grace. So open my eyes, Lord, to see your glory in all that is around me, in Jesus' name. Amen. Hope you prayed that prayer. As I say, go back and uh, use this as a basis for your prayer. Send the notes posted below the video. God bless you. See you next time.